गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग मैम थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू सो मच मैम यस सर सर दिस इज माई थर्ड वन सर यस सर यस सर एंड मैम माई फुल नेम इज कुनापुरी वेंकटेश शिव प्रसाद एंड आई हैव डन माई ग्रेजुएशन इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स फ्रॉम राजीव गांधी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कड़पा and my entire schooling and my graduation went in kadapa district itself and presently i am working as district tribal welfare officer in the state of andhra pradesh yes sir sir uh, they are in the next 3 to 4 months sir in couple of months in the next may sir the next may sir uh, it is 5 years from the first sitting of the uh, parliament sir यस सर लोकसभा एट दिस मोमेंट आई वाज आई एनेबल टू रिमेम्बर sir it is uh, written in the constitution of india itself sir that uh, the term of any uh, government uh, it should be the 5 years from the first sitting of the lok sabha sir sir at this moment i was unable to recall sir. sir it is uh, around 545 sir it's if i am not wrong uh, sir i think it is 545 sir but uh, i have to make sure sir yes sir uh, to the anglo indians uh, two seats have been reduced sir right sir uh, there uh, the government uh, has came to the conclusion that there are no adequate representation uh, for the anglo uh, indians in the country sir so that is why they have reduced the two seats adequate population sir to represent them yes sir sir it is in the current term of the government but i am unable to remember the exact uh, year sir how many seats in the rajya sabha sorry sir i have i have to read it <laughs> i am unable to recall right sir there are total uh, 29 uh, states and uh, eight union territories sir yes sir sir one is uh, chandigarh and uh, dadra and nagar uh, nagar haveli nagar nagar haveli delhi is one union territory 
பாண்டிச்சேரி புதுச்சேரி And I will recall uh, the remaining ones. I have to brush up the faulty parts. Good morning, ma'am. Ma'am, during my third year of graduation, uh, I decided to join the civil services. I felt that my temperament and my inclination towards uh, the civil society at large and one incident uh, persuaded me to take up the civil services in the third year of my graduation. Ma'am, uh, I went to one district science fair. There uh, I came across uh, our district magistrate and he offered uh, scholarship in ISRO for uh, two uh, disadvantaged group and they today uh, they are one of the some of the leading uh, eminent scientists in the country ma'am uh, by taking that scholarship that incident provoked me that uh, i can do my best uh, from the school people leader uh, to the president of uh, helping hand charity in my college i felt that i have some certain leadership skills and qualities uh, so that i can pursue a very good career in the civil services ma'am Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, we have uh achieved a uh, soft loan landing on the lunar mission with chandrayaan 3 when it is in the month of september ma'am It is the uh, extra planetary mission uh, of the ISRO to send uh, satellite to the Mars, ma'am. To the Mars? Yes. Mars or near it? Orbit? Uh, it is near the orbit of Mars, ma'am. To do what? To uh, find out uh, the lunar, I mean, composition of the Mars surface and to find whether. Uh, there is any livable component or the livable gas that is will be present in the Mars, which uh, may be useful for the human okay, we generation. Come to the third, Chandrayaan. What is Chandrayaan project? Ma'am, Chandrayaan project comprises of three components. Uh, one is uh, orbiter, which is going to uh, revolve around the lunar, uh, uh, lunar, uh, lunar in the lunar orbit, and second thing is lander Vikram. Uh, which is going to uh, find out what is the composition of the lunar surface in the uh, south pole and the third one is rover pragyan which is going to uh, conduct ex situ experiments uh, about the composition of the lunar surface and the uh, elements present in the lunar soil no, no, no.
Yes, ma'am. It is uh, artificial intelligence based uh, uh, a robot uh, which is uh, going to be placed in the Kaganyan mission, ma'am. When? Ma'am, as per the uh, thinking of ISRO, uh, the government has the target to send the uh, three Indian uh, astronauts uh, to the space by 2024, ma'am. No, ma'am, I don't. No. Okay. No matter, no matter. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, Green Hydrogen Mission uh, wants to make uh, India as the manufacturer of global green hydrogen, and it caters to various sectors like transportation sector uh, to make it uh, uh, more uh, fuel efficient and. Uh, another advantage of this uh, green hydrogen is that uh, we can uh, use this green hydrogen to achieve our renewable energy targets, ma'am, of uh, Paris Climate Agreement. One is it is environment friendly, ma'am. Okay, it reduces pollution. Pollution levels. Yes, second. And second, uh, it can. Uh, it can create more employment opportunities by uh, building a green hydrogen factories in India. Okay, it will reduce some. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shiva Prasad, very sir. good morning. Good morning, sir. So, we met earlier? Yes, sir, last year we met, sir. Yes. So, let me ask you a question on your work. Yes, sir. Uh, that is also related to your optional subject. Yes, sir. Right? So, with respect to tribe, what criteria you choose to decide a tribe? Sir, uh, in the immediately in the aftermath of our independence, uh, we started uh, to deliberate on how the uh, we have to distinguish the scheduled tribe from other uh, parts of the populations. There we have uh, the Chanda committee has been uh, has been uh, organized to find out what what should be the criteria of this scheduled tribes. That committee uh, came to uh, know that uh, there should be five criteria uh, to categorize the scheduled tribe, uh, which is uh, totally uh, different from other tribes or other populations. One is uh, geographic isolation, and the second one is primitive traits, and the third one is uh, it should be have the distinct culture, and the fourth one is economic backwardness, and the fifth one is it have it will should have the shyness uh, to contact with the other parts of the populations. Okay. So the other question, uh, what exactly is this PTG and PVTG? Sir, uh, after uh, demarcation of scheduled tribes from the population, uh, there used to have uh, certain uh, uh, issues that the whole developmental funds are going to use for only sh certain scheduled tribes, uh, which have uh, the which are sharing the major chunk. Then uh, this Debar Commission in 1965. 1975, uh, it uh, gave four criteria that these are there are certain sections which are most vulnerable among these scheduled tribes itself. Sir. So uh, based on these four criteria like uh, pre-agricultural level of technology and uh, the extremely lower uh, levels of literacy, 
stagnant or declining population, marked economic disparity compared to other population of the scheduled tribes. These four criteria have been used to uh, categorize uh, certain scheduled tribes are PVTGs. And this uh, PTG is the earlier name, sir. Then after that, uh, to remove the primitiveness in its name, uh, the committee has uh, uh, re referred that this should change as particularly vulnerable tribal groups. When was it changed? Sir, I'm not sure about the exact years. So, next question. With respect to electronics yes, and uh, communication, can you name some initiatives taken by this year budget uh, to boost the electronic sector in India? Sir, in the current interim budget, there is uh, there are certain initiatives, sir. Uh, the most important one is uh, allocation of 1 lakh crore corpus fund for development of cutting edge research and development projects. And among that, one of the uh, sectors is that semiconductor scheme, sir. And uh, the, uh, the government has increased the budget uh, for uh, semiconductor mission also, sir. So that uh, to produce a semiconductor fab in India soon to compete with other countries like Taiwan and China, sir. Okay. So with respect to budget again, yes. uh, very recently, go government has initiated something related to solar uh, power. What exactly is it? Sir, government ha has came uh, with uh, one uh, innovative thing, sir, to enhance the rooftop uh, solar, solar uh, uh, project in the entire country. It is uh, Pradhan Mantri Suryoda Yojana, uh, which, need, which uh, targets to uh, build one, at least one, uh, uh, one lakh, one crore of uh, these solar panels, rooftop solar panels across the country, providing with sir, certain in incentives. Sir. Good. So, with respect to, let me take you to the foreign policy. So, with respect to our neighborhood, very recently, in the last two days or today or tomorrow, can you name two, three events that's been happening? Sir, today, uh, Pakistan is going to uh, have its uh, major election, sir. Mm. And with regard to Myanmar, we have announced the, we are going to fence the India-Indo-Myanmar border, sir. And with regard to Maldives, uh, they have given a certain timeline, uh, which our Indian troops should uh, leave Maldives, sir. And they should replace with civilian authorities. Yes. So, with respect to India and Myanmar, uh, so the our border states, chief ministers have met the central government and asked for certain concerns. Can you name them? Yes, sir. Manipur uh, Chief Minister Biren Singh have met uh, our uh, uh, Home Minister Amit Shah ji, uh, and uh, they have asked for the very. I mean, uh, this guy. Uh, there is one. Uh, fight is happening between these uh, two groups sir, in Manipur and he has asked him to control uh, such kind of uh, I mean that uh, to end that uh, conflict between two uh, groups and uh, he also asked for uh, to uh, end this cross-border insurgency uh, between the Myanmar and India sir. So be clear with that read one more time. Okay sir. So with respect to the mig migration there yes, are sir. certain things that you are missing. Yes, and one last question with respect to Pakistan elections. So, what implications does it have on democracy in Pakistan? Sir, if we look at uh, various newspapers and articles in the recent week, uh, they uh, noted that uh, former Prime Minister uh, Nawab Sharif has been brought by this uh, Pakistan army to contest elections against the uh, former Prime Minister Imran Khan and his party. And uh, if we come across the uh, other articles also, the present Prime Minister has been uh, jailed, uh, I mean earlier Prime Minister has been jailed in various Toshakana and other cases. So this kind of thing uh, should not happen in a democracy. Uh, democracy itself starts with the free and fair elections. Sir. So I think. Uh, Everybody should have the uh, free and fair uh, competency and uh, uh, advantages at their disposal to contest an election uh, rather than having this such kind of uh, uh, cases and uh, inhibitions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir.
Venkata Siva Prasad. Yes. Can I call you that? Yes. Sir. Okay. Uh, you are from Kudappa district. Yes. Sir. What do you mean by Kudappa? What is the meaning? Sir, uh, the name uh, comes from that Kudappa came from Gadappa, sir. That it is a gateway uh, to the uh, Lord Venkateshwara and Seshashalam hills uh, from the southern side. So that Gadapa name, it has been, uh, uh, came as Kadapa, sir. Earlier it is, it, it names as Kudappa, but now it, we call it as Kadapa, sir. And uh, what are the, you know, there's a lot of minerals found in uh, your district. Yes. Can you name a three, four? Yes, sir. Sir, barites is the uh, major mineral which we found in our uh, district, sir. And the uh, other minerals are uranium, uh, which has been discovered recently, sir. And the uh, third one is, uh, we have mica also, sir. And we have limestone, sir. Okay. Um, You are an electronics and communication engineer. What do you mean when you, how you link electronics with communication? Sir, uh, in the field of communication, we majorly use these electronic com com components like semiconductors, integrated, uh, which, is, which are uh, helpful for uh, uh, manufacturing of integrated circuits, sir. Through that integrated circuits only, uh, we are, we are we use the uh, they we use them as means of communication uh, between two persons or two devices or two computers. Sir. So that was a link between the electronics and communications. Okay, you know rare earth we keep hearing a lot, like you know and the US NSA was there is uh, earlier also now is coming again and they are talking about the rare earth. Why the rare earth has become such a problem? Sir, there are various uh, rare earth met, met minerals. Basically, these uh, minerals have been concentrated in certain pockets of the world, like China, uh, which holds at most 80% of these rare earth minerals. Sir. So, uh, uh, due to uh, lack of uh, sufficient rare earth minerals across the world, uh, the country which holds these rare earth minerals, uh, it's going to lead the world in the next uh, generation, sir. That is why various budge is going around these rare earth minerals and the lower concentration of the rare earth minerals in a certain pockets of the world is the major issue, sir, with that. Is it so, what you said, that only China, China has the 80% of the mineral resources and other places do not have these resources. That is why the China is controlling, right? Yes. But is it so? Sir, uh, in no, other or places, is some other reason? Sir, these rare earth minerals are uh, useful in various applications. No, that way you know. Yeah. My question is, I am questioning your statement. That you claim that 80% is available only in China. I am questioning that statement. Is it so? Yes. Okay. You must have read it, then you know better. Uh, you talked about free and fair elections. What do you mean by free and fair elections? What is the, when you will say it's a free and fair election? Sir, there are two words about? in it, sir. Okay. One is free and one is fair. Right. Coming to the freeness, mm -hmm. uh, everybody, uh, regardless of caste, religion, or uh, rich or poor, everybody should have the chance uh, to contest election uh, freely, sir. That was the reason of freeness. And coming to fairness, uh, the uh, entire institutional architecture and, uh, for example, election commission of India, like that. So, uh, it, uh, it should have, uh, it should give the all uh, persons uh, not to use any other means like uh, muzzle power and money power. Uh, and you should be have the independent functioning for the uh, conduct of elections, sir. It is fairness, sir. So these two are the words. Going by your definition, in Bangladesh also there were free and fair elections, but USA objected to it. Then why? Sir, coming to Bangladesh, uh, the opposition party leaders uh, have been. Uh, have not contested the election, they have left out of the election, sir. 
so uh, i think the us has uh, so but but they were free and fair it's their choice whether to contest or not so how you don't call them free and fair then why usa could object to it sir people have the choice uh, to vote for whatever the party it contests sir right. so that is the major reason for free and fair sir it's the up to the political party okay. to your father that. was um, uh, is an ex service man and you say special treatment assistant in army, uh, army medical corps can you tell us what is all entail sir uh, this army medical corps is one of the uh, organization of the armed forces uh, which cures and uh, helps in the uh, uh, treatment of the wounded soldiers in the wars uh, yeah. to no that uh, i know yes. sir, you use the, uh, the terminology i'm i mean is curious yes. is special treatment assistant yes. what is that entail sir uh, my father has joined as nursing assistant sir and the next promotion for it is special treatment assistant sir oh, so okay, they so have special, they have certain specialization to treat to treat certain ailments uh, in the uh, arm okay in that context yes. okay that's what i was a bit curious this uh, you know there is a uh, in ortho, uh, anthro anthropology there was a big debate as to whether the humans they became human they became bipedal first or starting using the uh, tools first and it was settled by a discovery can you tell us about that discovery sorry sir i am unaware of that uh, discovery and the debate sir lucy yes sir lucy thank you thanks rinkal you are already working as a district tribal welfare officer yes sir you are the top man in the district for the tribals yes sir to my department sir but at the district level you are the number one i don't think i was uh, number one sir i was part of the district administration under district collector okay so you already mentioned about the uh, primitive tribal groups you must be knowing that it is very difficult to have the schemes for these vulnerable groups sir. do you think they are getting adequate attention yes sir uh, earlier uh, these pvtgs have been grouped uh, in the scheduled tribes itself and the various schemes and policies uh, have been introduced combinedly for all the uh, scheduled tribes sir. but uh, in the recent uh, decades i mean recent from the last two to three decades uh, exclusive focus have been given on these pvtgs sir for example uh, we have introduced from BM, pm janman scheme recently with 24000 crore out, uh, outlay uh, for uh, saturation of various government schemes for these pvtgs and we have another scheme like scheme for development of pvtgs at the national level uh, which uh, funds uh, entire projects for the development of pvtgs across 18 states and united territories sir so do you think the scheme of the government for the amelioration of the tribals in india is on the right track <coughs> are they being able to be lifted up and come into the mainstream is that the policy of the government or not to bring them in the mainstream sir uh, there are three approaches uh, for the development of tribals in our country sir one is isolative approach so that uh, the tribe should not be integrated with the mainstream and they should develop according to their own genius and the one is assimilation we should integrate with the tribal hindu sir and at currently uh, we are most successful in the third one sir which is uh, jawaharlal nehru's tribal panch shield which focus on integration that certain aspects of development should reach the tribals for their development and we should respect uh, tribal rights on land and forest in certain aspects sir. so we should have the balance uh, between this isolation and assimilation through the process of integration for the overall development of the tribes sir and the government is going in the right direction uh, using this integrative approach for their development how many people from the tribal uh, are able to get into the services the state services and the ias and the all india services what is the record so far sir uh, currently they have uh, reservations uh, uh, 7.5 reservation for sts but uh, i am unaware of the exact uh, number of the scheduled tribes representation that is the all india level and all india services are 7.5% what is the state uh, level uh, reservation for them what is the population in the state we have 27.39 lakh population of uh, scheduled tribes so in, in our state proportion to their population they must be getting the employment in the state services yes sir 27% yes 
so there is a demand for actually having this uh, uh, scheme in which they want uh, the creamy layer to be applied to them and uh, you must have read in the newspaper recently that those people who have made into the services and ias and ips officers should make way for the other people to yes sir so do you think is that possible the matter is before the court yes sir Supreme Sir, court in uh, Lakshmi Narayan Gupta case, Supreme Court uh, coined that uh, we should have a certain creamy layer among the scheduled caste itself, sir, so that uh, the other uh, disadvantaged groups within the scheduled caste uh, should uh, have this reservation and the uh, best. Uh, you are talking about the scheduled caste or the scheduled tribe? Uh, do you think both are interchangeable? Sir, no, sir. Scheduled caste are different from scheduled tribes, sir. Correct. So, this issue is applicable to both the yes. caste and tribes? Yes, sir. Creamy layer uh, should be, uh, should we have to, should we should bring for both ACs and STs, sir. So that uh, the disadvantaged groups among these two sections can come forward. So, do you agree with that uh, theory and do you think is it possible constitutionally? Sir, uh, though... Uh, our constitution provides the reservation to the entire uh, category. Uh, we need to think about uh, whether certain amendments can be bring to our constitution uh, through constitution of certain commission uh, to uh, deliberate on the issue, sir. You know Article 341, 342. Yes. The parliament is entitled and yes. is empowered. Nobody else can do it. The state legislation doesn't have it. But there are states. I think in Andhra Pradesh also they have tried to bifurcate the categories so that it tickles down to the more disadvantaged. So what what, what happened there? Sir, political will should uh, be there uh, to uh, uh, give a representation to the weaker sections among the scheduled tribes. So that political will was there in Andhra Pradesh, that was there in uh, Punjab, that was there in uh, Bihar also, but uh, the Supreme Court came in the view, that is why the matter is pending before the Supreme Court. So what is the status? Can it be, is it possible constitutionally? Will is there political fine? Is it constitutionally possible? Sir, to uh, divide the existing reservation among the tribes or we need to bring more uh, reservations, sir? Are you asking? That, that is the issue. That is the yes, issue. Yes. So there is 50% uh, cap on the uh, uh, reservation thing, sir, uh, which is uh, uh, posted in Indra Sani case. So that uh, we need to tinker about uh, that thing if we want to give more representation to scheduled tribes, sir. Sir, it... Uh, then whatever is the, the site, 27% is existing in the state. Can, yes. can it be bifurcated? Because the power is under 341 is with the parliament. Yes. Can they do it? That is the issue. Yes, sir. Parliament has the power to do that, sir. Uh, you need to think upon it, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, sir.